With the holidays right around the corner, the topic of either a first 3D printer, the next 3D printer, or what actually is a 3D printer is going to likely come up, especially if you're a first time user. Let's talk about how to explain 3D printing to somebody who is not very technical. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you have been in this industry for any amount of time, you've likely ran into a lot of people that do not fundamentally understand what 3D printing is. And if they have some basic understanding, they probably don't understand that it is not just click, print, and go. It's not like the 2D printer that sits next to their PC. It's a piece of machinery that sometimes gets a little bit upset. When we look at what a 3D printer is, there are two main types that we have to be aware of. The filament printers and the resin printers. And before we go too deep on the resin printers, I gotta say it, resin is toxic. But maybe don't say that to someone who you want to have get you a printer or resin. We're gonna get into that in just a little bit. But let's talk about filament printers because they're actually one of the easier ones to explain. Chances are those that are asking about what is a 3D printer and haven't done their own research are likely going to be maybe your parents or grandparents, as someone that isn't immediately perfectly tech savvy. And that's why this will make perfect sense to them. It is a computer controlled hot glue gun. Basically you take a hot glue gun, you duct tape it to an Etch-A-Sketch and you move it up and down, that is a 3D printer. You will need to make a distinction that you do not want a 3D pen. 3D pens are one of those things that are sold as 3D printers, but aren't 3D printers, and it can be really confusing. See, the last thing that we wanna do is to have confusion during the holidays of what to get, what not to get. And if you're not certain that the person that would like to get you a 3D printer has a good idea, give them a list just give them a list because there are so many brands and options out there. If you just go to Amazon and search 3D printer, you've got some problems here with the top result being a Gen 1 Ender 3, which are not worth $168. We've got this piece of objectionable garbage. Then we move into an older printer, a Voxel Lab Aquila X2. Then there's a resin printer. There's the Ender 3 V2. What I'm trying to get at is there are a lot of options and they're not always easy to tell apart. What we are looking for is effectively some helping hands for somebody in your family to make sure that they can get you what you want. Just on the second page, I quickly found a 3D printing pen, which they might think is a good idea. You might or you might not. Don't be afraid to try out those pens. They're often slept on, but they are awesome when you need to bond two pieces of printed material together and want to make sure the seam goes away. You can use it as like a TIG welder, if you will. So get good and start stacking dimes like those guys on Instagram. You know who you are. But if you look at these machines through the lens of somebody who doesn't understand the tech very well, these machines look scary. And the test print that is on them is not normally the way that that's ever going to come out. So this is just marketing. I would recommend giving them a list of specific machines, maybe buy them direct from manufacturer, like the Solval SV06, the Elegoo Neptune 4 Pro, plus or max, or, I guess you could even do the SV06 Plus if you're looking for something a little bit larger. There are options out there, and literally I have not seen Sovol on this page yet. Now I'm getting cameras and enclosures and things like that that don't fit this bill. This is what Amazon tries to do. If you are having a tough time explaining what a 3D printer is, the computer controlled hot glue gun should get you most of the way. But if they're still wondering how things function, you have two different ways that we found that work well. My favorite is wet spaghetti. You are building something out of wet spaghetti. You can't just run wet spaghetti out into thin air. There has to be something to catch it. Whether that is support material, another printed part, whatever it is, if you can make it out of wet spaghetti, you can make it on a 3D printer. Now the 3D printer dries that wet spaghetti pretty quickly and that's because it's hot 
wet spaghetti. The other good way to look at this is if you are building a sand castle where you super saturate the sand with water so it turns into like mud and you're kind of dripping to build it up. I don't know if that one's going to land very well if you're in a landlocked area, but you know, if you live near the coast, maybe they'll understand that. And similar deal, you can't bridge across something without having something to catch it right? We can't do cantilevered bridging here in the 3D printing world and don't let them go down that rabbit hole either. The wet spaghetti for me traditionally tends to work the best because everybody has worked with wet spaghetti at some point. I think that one will land if for some reason the Etch-A-Sketch one doesn't get you 100% of the way there. When it comes to materials, just give them a list from people that you want to buy from. If they want to buy on Amazon, Polymaker, an Overture, even though those are pretty much the same thing, those are going to be fine brands to buy from if you're looking for something more specific on Amazon. Just find the color that you want and, and tell them that that's what you want. At some point, you have to help them out too. Remember, if you really want to get into 3D printing, you've been looking at this for a long time, and those that might be wanting to purchase something for you certainly have not been. So, Give them a helping hand where you can. Further forward, make sure to start with PLA only because honestly, you don't want to start with PETG, ABS, ASA, whatever. Those are complicated. Just start with PLA. It is easy. And if you are okay with going away from Amazon, we highly recommend Printed Solid. It is made in America. It is incredibly affordable. And we recently made our own filament. We'll card to that video so you guys can take a look. It was some of Jesse's elixir, which uh, if you've been following this industry long enough, it's polyalchemy elixir, but from printed solid. And it is super, super cool. While that video is quite long, like 52, 53 minutes, that will give you a fundamental understanding of how filament is made and might be a great way to introduce somebody to this industry of how filament is made why it's kind of a big deal but just start with pla you can look at silk pla but i do recommend to at least try regular pla for a little bit before you move into the silks because they can be a little bit more complicated and as far as tools goes most 3d printers should come with all the tools that you need but having a decent set of allen keys that have the ball end on them would be pretty nice to have so if you already have a machine and maybe you're looking to get some extra tools those are great to have as well, especially if they have the screwdriver handle, keeps your wrist from hurting. Alternatively, you can get a nice set of like Weira hex keys and just print a T-handle for it because 3D printing is freaking awesome and you can do stuff like that. And as far as understanding what a 3D printer is, I can certainly come in here and tell you that it is a computer controlled motion system, heating a thermoplastic well beyond its last transition temperature and extruding it at a variable rate with generally consistent layer to produce a soft of the body. Or I could say it's a computer controlled hot glue gun that uses a computer program to talk to it and tell it what to do. But I would say if it is something that is on your wish list this holiday season, give them a wish list as well machines, filament and all of that. The cool thing about owning a 3D printer is that you now become easy to shop for. A new spool of filament, maybe some extra tools, maybe a new printer that's just like the old one, but the latest version. There are lots of opportunities out there. Don't be afraid to ask questions. And if you have any, you can put them in those comments below. We'll do our best to help you out there. Because yes, there is a lot of terminology. There's a lot of lingo and certainly the slicer gets very complicated. But when it comes to Buying that first printer, it's nowhere near as difficult as a very technical person could make it out to be. If you do want to email us directly, you can do so YouTube at 3dmusketeers.com. That way you don't have to leave a comment if you're not feeling like uh, keeping it public. But then we move into resin printing. Resin printing, as we said in the beginning of the video, don't mention that it's toxic because there's pretty much no way that someone would buy you something that's toxic. You be aware that it's toxic, but... Maybe let's just keep that between us girls, you feel me? With resin printing, the machines are just kind of based on their size. If you're just starting out, an Elegoo Mars or an Elegoo Saturn size machine is probably just fine. And if you've been printing in resin for a while, just try out some new cool resin. We've been using the Soraya Tech Blue Tough Nylon Black recently. I'm like 12 bottles deep into a project. It's a wonderful resin it prints great it's been really reliable for us and other than me forgetting to add resin one print it's been a really really easy material to work with so highly recommended 
and uh, it's actually way more flexible than I expected. Some things to note, if you have a brand of resin that you like, stick with that brand. For us, it's Soraya Tech, but you might prefer resin from Elegoo, from any cubic or from somebody else. Stick with the brand. One, it will be more compatible with other materials that you have. But similarly, when we searched 3D printer on Amazon, if you search 3D printing resin, you're going to get a lot of options. Now, for me personally, since I've purchased Soraya Tech Blue Nylon, that is going to be up at the top of my search results. So we can ignore that. But we can see a bunch of other resins. More resins that I've purchased. You can see I, I like my Soraya Tech. Find a brand that works for you. And again, making a recommendation is really, really important. The machines themselves are way easier to explain than you think. There are two different schools of thought. You have the, let's explain to them exactly what it is, where it's a computer screen, but it's black and white. You know, like in the 90s, it goes black to block the light and it goes clear to let the light through. That is pretty much how your regular LCD works, but don't go down the rabbit hole of comparing it to the computer screens of yesteryear because those were CRTs. Those worked a lot differently. They used a cathode ray tube, way more complicated, but suffice to say, it's just a light source, a screen, and then a vat of liquid that when you put UV light on it, it solidifies. And you do that over and over and over and over and over again, and it's really accurate, which a lot of these machines are because they're coming with ridiculous screens. I mean, look, the Mars 4, which is a kind of medium sized printer has a 6K screen. I still have my original Marses that have a 2K screen and that blew me away. I'm using a Jupiter, which has a 6K screen. And there are certainly machines that use DLP technology and other technology as well. Again, when it comes to getting a machine, if you are the buyer and you don't know, just ask. It is a lot better to ask than to make an assumption. I get that that is going to blow the surprise, and the surprise is like 95% of the fun. But if you ask early enough, and I guess if you're watching this video before the holidays of 2023, probably a little too late. But if you ask early enough, or you know, you social engineer your way to get them to tell you without actually telling you, you might be able to still make it a bit of a surprise. But hey, if you are the buyer, I love the red herring of just like wrapping a bottle of resin or wrapping a roll of filament when they don't have a 3D printer and just let them sit there puzzled about what exactly to do. And then you bring out the printer. I'm totally down for that because that adds the fun right back. You feel me? But as far as resin printers go, we are big fans of Elegoo here. I just bought two Elegoo Jupiters for a big project that we're working on. The Jupiter is not a first time printer. They're like close to a thousand dollars. Do not buy that for a first timer. But if they're looking to get into like miniatures or Dungeons and Dragons or Warhammer 40,000 or Warhammer 40K, a regular like Mars 4 would be a perfect printer for those that are looking to get into the resin printing hobby. When it comes to resin printing, things like silicone spatulas, nitrile gloves, alcohol, specifically, we've really been enjoying denatured alcohol over isopropyl alcohol. It does smell like ethanol versus regular alcohol because it is ethanol, so it kind of smells like someone's cooking moonshine. And as long as you have all of your teeth, it probably won't alert the police. But it's been really great because the resin does just wash right off of it. But the thing that we have issues with when it comes to the alcohol is that the resin stays in suspension. So you must use chemicals to pull out that resin from the alcohol and precipitate it. Or you have to cure all of that alcohol, turn it into a jelly, let it evaporate and then dispose of it properly. If you are using a regular style resin, we have really been enjoying Neen Green as a cleaner. It seems to work pretty well and it's somewhat easily accessible to buy here in the United States. But if you are abroad, kind of get whatever you can. But I would stay with these kind of heavy duty kitchen cleaners that can come in a concentrate or, and if you're not certain if it's gonna work, just go with alcohol. Isopropyl above 90% would be great, or denatured alcohol, which you can generally buy by the gallon or by the five gallon. For me locally, it comes in a steel pail for whatever that might be useful for you. But there's also these wash and cure stations. We can see the one here from Creality that make amazing gifts for the resin printer out there if they don't already have one. These 
absolutely help contain the mess that comes with resin printers because it can be really freaking messy. And unlike filament 3D printing, if you get a little bit of filament on the floor, you can vacuum it up. If you get a little bit of resin on the floor, they've likely stained the carpet. If there is carpet and if it is a hard floor, it could leave some residue behind. So it is good to always have plenty of paper towels handy as well as a portable UV light to cure any of those paper towels that you might use to clean up spills. These wash and cure stations completely remove a lot of that resin exposure and keep it inside of a sealed system, which I can certainly appreciate because, oh yeah, it makes life way easier. They come in all different sizes. This is Creality's. We have the Anycubic Wash and Cure Plus, which we like a lot here. But if they have a smaller resin printer, you don't have to get the Plus. You can get the regular size one and save couple of bucks. And these all make really, really good gifts because ultimately resin printers are not very expensive as far as 3D printers are concerned. The wash and cure stations are not very expensive at all. In fact, they're normally less than the actual printer. Resins can be expensive and certainly they're a little bit picky. So if you do want to buy resin for somebody or you want someone to buy resin for you, send them a link, please, or ask for a link because that's one you can easily get lost in the weeds on, and we don't want to see that happen. As far as filament printers go, it's pretty straightforward. As long as it's PLA, it'll probably run fine. Most brands of PLA are going to be just fine. You have specific colors that you want. I understand shopping outside of your usual brands. We do it too from time to time. But if you can remain brand consistent, it means that your experience will remain consistent as well. And that's a big deal for a lot of us that want to use 3D printing for more than just a hobby, they want to turn it into a, you know, a little bit of a money-making kind of thing. And if that's the case, we've done some awesome podcast episodes. We'll card to one of my favorite where I talk about you being way too cheap about your time when it comes to selling your 3D prints. And we'll link to some other ones in the description down below that you might find useful as well. We do a live podcast pretty much every weekend where we talk about kind of the business behind 3D printing, maybe some big news in the industry, maybe there's some drama going on and we're talking about it, and it's a lot of fun. Certainly not the most kid-friendly, but if you're looking to get a little bit more information and certainly see behind the scenes here at 3D Musketeers, that's a great way to do it as well. And hey, if you found something useful in this video, a like and a subscribe would be greatly appreciated. We try to do a lot of education around some of the entertainment style videos that we tend to do. And coming up very soon, we're going to be releasing all of our footage from the Sanjay Mortimer Rap Rap Fest, where I have actually already shaved my head. We did this for a charity. If you want to know what's going on, we will link to the charity fundraiser page in the description down below. Go take a look and we will card to the live stream where this actually happens. So I don't actually look like this right now. We're, we're filming this ahead of time so that I don't have to rush like crazy when we get back in town. But I do want to thank all of our channel supporters who have made this video and ones like this possible. Without you guys, we wouldn't be doing this kind of thing. Thank you for what you do in making this possible. And if you do want to support us in the efforts that we do here, you can do so by clicking those links down below and joining Patreon, PayPal, or YouTube channel members coming soon on Thangs and Printables for as little as $1 a month with the $10 tier and higher getting access to our private Discord. Right below me will be a video from last year where we talked about great gifts for makers. And if you're in the market for that kind of thing, I think you'll enjoy it. But that is all I have for you all today. Make sure to leave a comment, let me know what you thought, and if you're struggling with this kind of thing, we can help you out. But stay safe out there, don't forget to call your loved ones, and as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one.